What's going on, everybody? It is Seamus and Marcos with another episode of the Macro Perspective Podcast. As you all know, team, we are now officially on Spotify and yeah. more platforms, so you can take the listening pleasure and you can hear us too in your ears at any time, in your car, at work, maybe yeah. on a walk like we recommend. Now, we've gotten to a few episodes of Micro Bites as well, guys. If you have not checked that out, that are those are basically little synopsis of 10 minutes or less talks of us talking about a concept that we personally love and want to just talk about for y'all and go in depth in that short amount of time frame. Marcos, any other updates other than that? No, I just want to take a second to shout out Rachel for the assistance there and helping us be able to um, be on multiple platforms. It's actually a good deal of work. And if anybody has ever sat down to start something like this, um, you know, learning with somebody else is actually really fun because you guys get, kind of go through this kind of new creative rhythm and yeah. um yeah like as as the, as of the recording of this we still have to like again go through another hoop because apple podcast you need to make sure you have your apple id linked to this other creative account and it's you know not that it's frustrating it's just crazy to think like when when you're using or viewing uh one of these things the the back end team that's helping take care of that is like I have a, a, a much more profound respect for those people because it is a little arduous and it's a little tedious and they're getting it done. And it's actually what makes this thing have a, a pulse, you know? Yeah. I do want to commend like the fact, like just bringing it back, you know, we're just two different individuals. We're on different sides of the, the country, like a little bit, you know, when you're thinking about listening, listening things, I just remember back in the day, it was like you had to listen to the radio and that was kind of it. And audiobooks were kind of a thing. But now it's, they're like, it's they're like a like, CD or a cassette. Yeah, CD or cassette. And you have to rewind. I remember like I got like a Tony Robbins thing and it was like I had to put in the CD player and it was like, dang, now everything is digital. People are so obscure yet so. I don't even want to say obscure. They're, they're obscure yet so up there, if it makes sense, because there's so many shows now and so many things. Uh, you know, I was listening to 102.7 Kiss FM with Ryan Seacrest for me or like, you know, 106.7 like K-Rock out here in Los Angeles. They they, they kind of just had that. And now anyone, anyone can have a podcast and talk about anything about they want, yet they can get famous or they can have their popularity with social media. So it's, it's just, it just comes to show like how far communication technology and work for human beings have come. So it's, it's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. Yeah. It's we've technology has done a lot of stuff and um, literally us just starting this. When I thought about going to those platforms, I thought it would just be our audio only. Right. And yeah. come to find out it's like, no, actually the video that we're creating from day one, the scenery did matter, <laughs> you know? Um, and it was good that we have, I feel like decent sounding microphones, maybe not top of the, the line at this point, but not top production, but it's good enough. <laughs> yeah. We're, you know, and we hope to improve those things and the viewing and listening experience as we go further and further. So, it, you mm -hmm. know, it, it's, again, it's just like little things that keeps us learning. It's really cool yeah uh, yeah yeah it's man i mean infinite age man there's literally literally like they're like even even as we're i had a google what are the 10 best places to like you know use as a cert i guess like the server to then send it out and it's like pff, you know you list it out like this one does this and this one was like i have no idea what that even means right now like you're speaking freaking swahili my friend dude it's a whole another level well we'll we'll definitely get those technical issues sorted out and i definitely appreciate all the help that everyone's been doing um, and just even the internet itself, it's so easy to Google and chat GPT these things now. And um, with that being said, I, I did want to talk about maybe some timeless, timeless lessons. And Marcos and I just shared some education ourselves. And we just recently listened and read to the book by Napoleon Hill, right? Uh, Outwitting the Devil. Um, maybe a little synopsis would be good. Uh, Marcos, you want to give him a little synopsis on that one? Yeah, so this came as a recommendation from uh, one of my clients that has gone through a lot, mm -hmm. um, a lot of stuff in business and in life, and 
you know, all of our conversations are always super deep and I learn a lot from, you know, their wisdom. It's actually mm -hmm. a couple. And um, they're like, you really need to read it. It's one of my favorites. It's like timeless. And, mm -hmm. you know, I thought, okay, this book's been out around for a while and it's been around like 12 years, but like, I didn't understand that it was, you know, like a, a man, like a manifest that they found um, from Napoleon Hill and that it was something he was writing, you know, before we were on the brink of the second world war. And yeah, you know, like, Again, <clears throat> apparently there's a con some conspiracy theories around like the book too, right? Like, was he actually writing it then? Is this is something that they came up with afterwards? Um, they might have played with a little bit of the IP, which you know. Well, they, yeah, like it's not things that fudged around a little. <laughs> I mean, they they tried like even in the beginning of the book, it talks about how. Um, you know, some of the language may not be appropriate in in, in today's oh. society, and like a little bit like uh, some of the words may not make sense in context of what you're reading yeah. relative to like what the words might mean now. Um, but they kept it in there that way. So I mean, I would I would probably think that it didn't alter something in order for yeah. that to be what's going on. I'll edit this yeah. out. <laughs> no worries. We will. She's leaving. She's getting ready. <laughs> We've got the editing powers now, guys. So we have the, ed we have the editing powers. Um, or maybe just leave it in there. Oh, yeah. That, we're doing this with the kids around. It's President's Day, by the way, guys. Um, it is. It is. But um, so, yeah, they, they had that conspiracy where literally, uh, and I, I didn't even know. Like, you know, again, like now it's like I'm down a rabbit hole of like listening to different people's like ideas behind it. It doesn't matter because the message, their message still hit hard. It gave me like, chills and i think sometimes when you're like you know when you see a story based on a true story or written you know we'll say what is it 90 years no 80 years ago right yeah um, 40s 30s yeah yeah like whole 80s, century years, ago, pretty much yeah, 84 years ago right like you're thinking about it in that context and it's like man if it really was that like everything's cyclical right just like fashion is basically what it kind of like what spoke to me is like life could be very cyclical um much so. and, and uh yeah so the main synopsis of the book is you know is basically looking at behaviors um that you know are basically moving you away from things that are good you know um and the way, i guess you you might say quote divine right mm -hmm. towards the path of enlightenment mm -hmm. in which only two out of a hundred people can really get so two percent of the population yeah and then you know the conversation with the devil 98 percent of them are getting swayed through um what is known as the drift, right? And getting yeah. swayed back into the negative connotations of, mm -hmm. of life, right? Does that kind of sum it up? No, that's perfect. I really love how you said that there. It really does come down. It is cyclical. A lot of these things with people don't realize is life, as much as we have new technologies, as, well, as much as we have new stories and as much as we have just new things in, in the day to day, it's only been a certain amount of years since that book or manifesto was written, humans have not changed that much, right? Like mm -hmm. there just might be new things and stuff. Human beings haven't changed that much. Times have, yet human beings haven't. And the thing about this is our psychology, psychology and one day we're definitely gonna have a psychologist on here, but like evolutionary psychology and evolutionary sociobiology, it all comes down to the main, main frames. And when things hit the fan, human beings will always go to root code. It's just the truth. Um, and we will go through what we know to be best. And with that being said, when the book, what the book is talking about, and from what I'm understanding is if you are not very definitive with your actions, your steps, and you're clear about it, you will be drifting and you will be drifting among a few categories, which most people will understand. And we talk about these and we'll basically break them down into your health, into your wealth, into your relationships, and then even just your overall habits and happiness. And when those areas are not dialed in in your life, you can use certain vices to null yourself because you're not living your truest form. So one way that the devil, right, we're trying to outwit the devil in this book, is one way he helps you drift is he'll use your vices of food, which even though it is a natural feeling, he will use it and ostracize it and make you have an extreme reaction. Sex, alcohol, drugs, addictions of any kind. And to this day, very much so, more people now 
and I was just listening to this, I think on Peter Atia. If if you were to if Peter Atia says along the lines of like, if you were talking to me 10 years ago, more people would only die by like a car accident or by suicide, young people being 40 and under. But now, because people are so accustomed to different things, stress, sex, sleep, uh, like drugs, like all these things in our society, people have so many vices. And now these vices are attaining to their deaths or attaining to their downfalls. And there's just so many stories there we don't even have to get into. But the concept I'm trying to get to is be very careful about what's going to make you drift. If you do not have a plan of definitive in your, in your life, it's very difficult to find yourself in the top 2% in your success in any category, if that makes sense. You know, it does. And I think that was another a good point. And um, I, I dog-eared a bunch of the pages of the book, which this, again, in, in and of itself is a, a revelation for me because – I'm like, when the F would I ever, you know, want to do that? Because like, I like keeping the physical integrity of a book pure. But now it's like, it, now that like this book has caused me to do that, I'm like, oh, yeah. I need to do this for when I have those those moments. And then if I, again, like I never understood why people go back and read a book. This is one where I was like, I could definitely reread this in a, in a year from now. And a different page is probably going to speak to me. Oh, and yeah. I'm like, in a lot of the other books I've read this year, same thing. They're 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 bringing up good points. I'm like, I'm starting to like go back and put those little tags for myself and be like, I don't know why this, this page supposedly spoke to me at that time. What was my thinking? But yeah. this page is now speaking to me. So it's like a new way of maybe like, you know, maybe that's my goal for next year. Reread every book in the same order. I did it from the year before. It's a good one. And um, then see what happens. But it's, it's cool. And like, when I was talking to you last week about this, I was like, man, you really need to just like, listen listen to this or, or or read it and um you know the the concept of the drift was just so like impactful um and again too like i told you it kind of combined with uh the art of war or the war of art so, not the art of war not not, not the other uh, you know uh there which was one a, Sun Tzu or which or the, uh, no, that's just the other one uh stephen pressfield where yeah. it's like you have resistance and then the resistance in your life is likely going to cause you to drift so these two books i read back to back and i'm like whoa, like that's eerie, you know, like, you yeah. know, um, these two concepts are people trying to, again, kind of put their finger on some, some force that you cannot mm -hmm. explain that every time you're kind of getting to that point where you're like on the, on the verge of the breakthrough. Mm -hmm. Right. And, uh, ironically enough, the book I'm reading now is the compound effect, right? When you're at the plane, of the <laughs> right when you're about to get that dang hockey stick going upward trajectory, you're met with this resistance and then the drifting behaviors might come in. And I'm like, oh, gosh, like these three books are now like literally my, my, like it's all, it's all coming to the same conclusion yeah. just in different ways. And I, I see that as, um, one of my favorite books. Uh, I guess we're just gonna have a book report today, guys. And we're just gonna <laughs> take it back to outwitting the devil. Yeah. Four rules for life uh, by Jordan B. Peterson, whatever your thoughts are about him, guys, just that book alone was a big impact for me, but, there's a few lines in there for me that I, again, talking about rereading books. There's only a certain few books in my life that I reread, and it doesn't have anything to do with like reading more books. It's just revisiting books that impact you, right? That book impacted me. I've read it four times, listened to it eight times, whatever. But the book says chaos ensues. Chaos will always ensue. It's kind of like being a gardener for your mind. What, what happens in a garden, Marcos? There's always going to be weeds. You, you weeds. reap what you sow. <laughs> yeah, you reap what you sow, but there will always be weeds, right? And the, the moment that you start getting momentum with your garden, you're right into your fall harvest, what happens? Sometimes there will be weeds. Sometimes there will be other plants that you didn't want, invasive species. And it's like you have to be a gardener to your mind. A lot of people don't understand this, but you need to be constantly tending to your mind. Um, and that's the concept of the drift. Whatever your mind is thinking about, life you just need to constantly be mending to those things and watching that when chaos ensues you need to bring back order right so like you said hey you're about to find success and then it's like all these weeds came out of nowhere it's like that's that gardener moment you got to have that moment where you're like all right i gotta cut these weeds apart so i can freaking get to this moment that i'm trying to get to you know the well, hot your gardening home and exactly it's, it's funny because you literally just said it's chaos is one of the say that sentence again that he that from his book chaos ensues that's chaos ensues. Of, you know all right the concept of which chapter was that do you remember 
it's just the whole concept like the the whole concept that jordan peterson talks about in life and what you'll notice is and he's he does this a lot better than i do he does like three hour speeches that i've seen him like three times now and it's like here, here here's infinity if you, if you can think of an infinity sign okay in the middle of that infinity sign is you you are trying to create order and right in front of you is chaos and you're in a constant infinite loop of taking chaos and putting it into order and there's a spot between you two that spot is this space this resonance between chaos and order and that's what we like to call like beyond order, beyond chaos. It's kind of just like a middle zone. But in there lies some beauty. And that beauty is the concept of you making a choice. And if you can make a choice to where you can find a way to make that chaos work for you, and then it becomes your order, and you're just constantly in an infinite loop of trying to level up life. Yeah. It's, it's hard to explain. It's a little bit esoteric, but the concept is true. Like life is constantly being more chaotic and it's up to you to find a way to order it. And here's the thing. Every time you reach a goal, the next goal is you trying to make it more efficient of just reaching that goal. Whatever the goal is, you're just trying to find a different way of making it efficient. Whether that's like what you talked about in your microbite is finding a new mentor to make that goal go faster or finding a community. Like I talked about to your environment to make it go faster. It's, yeah always trying to find the most efficient zone to go from chaos to order that's it that's really life <laughs> yeah it's funny because so you said that and I, again i was like maybe i'm primed to try to get that actual chapter out of you because i want to go back and like go find that you know because this chapter is really long you know what i mean like i'm know. gonna be honest with you i can't tell you which chapter it is i just feel like I'm <laughs> it's just it's just a concept that like it was the, with me well, that concept also then took me to the other book that like I started in January, finished in February. And it was one that I didn't use an audio book simultaneous to reading, um, which is, again, like I was like, maybe I need to sprinkle some of those in. So I'm truly reading for this goal yeah. that I have. Right. Like, yeah, really. I, reading I, like, it's reading it to me. But like, you know, I have the physical and I'm listening and it just keeps my attention better. Right. Um, but I'm physically read that entire book and I finished that on the plane before starting this book. And it, it said that exact thing. Uh, it's chaos, be kind, have fun. That was yeah. literally the last sentence of the book, right? It's mm -hmm. chaos, be kind, have fun, mm -hmm. right? And it's chaos, be kind. Now that was a quote actually for from Patton Oswalt, I believe, oh. right? Um, and so obviously the author of that book was a you know PhD psychologist that said that, you know, my one like add on to that thing, because I do think it's beautiful with how simple it is, was the have fun element. And he's like, that's my, right. you know, and he's, the concept of fun, right? The, the whole book, right? How to build scheduling time for it, right? Again, everybody, oh, yeah. I mean, let's face it. Everybody kind of kind of comes up with a concept or their intellectual property when it comes to a book, right? They want to have like some sort of system, right? That they, you know, hopefully people can identify with or make an extension of their own. He called it the play model, right? I mentioned that on the yeah. podcast before, right? Um, uh, pleasing, living, uh, agonizing, and yielding different behaviors, right? Yeah, those four and topics, yeah. Those, those four topics, right? But then the book ends with that. And as I'm reading this, I literally I was like, you know what would be fun to me, right? Like, one, I want to write a book. But two, I've always wanted to have like a choose your own adventure book, right? And <laughs> I was bumped, I, like back in the day, like go to this page, go to that page. Well, no, the book, he's like that. He's like, as a kid, that was part of what I found fun. And yeah. He referenced a book. I think it was like UFO 457 or something. Or yeah, UFO or yeah, UFO like 457 or something like that. I'll have to go back and find it. I'll, I'll put it in the show notes. Um, and it's like a choose your own adventure with like, you know, uh, I'm sure it's similar to what you can do on like a Netflix thing now, but you have like a viewing experience with it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I had this really profound idea from, from that of like, um, and the book talked about it, how the only way for you to actually get to the, the like Shangri-La, like the golden palace or whatever they, they, he called it in the book was to actually read the book all the way through straightforward, not jumping yeah. around from, you know, section to section based on your jump, but just reading it straight through. You know what I mean? It's like That's sometimes funny. it's like sometimes the solution to the chaos is just do it how it was originally intended, like mm -hmm. concept. It was I was like, I really want to read this book now because I want to do the choose your own adventure side of it. But then you go back and then be like, hey, like you know, you don't ever reach like the promised land unless you just kind of go by the, the normal definition of a book sometimes. <laughs> it's interesting you talk about this. Um, I had a deep conversation with a friend and 
I was bringing up the book Outwitting the Devil and Drifting and the concept of definitiveness and action and finding, I would say, stronger law or an enlightened place or the the next, I think the next, I would just say the next, like the next phase or like the next mm-hmm. part. Um, and he was saying something along the lines of he went into a few concepts of getting coaches and like we talked about for the for the listeners here like he got a coach i coach him but he got a coach in business Mm. the thing about that was he got rubbed off by this coach in the wrong way because of one thing this person kept on jumping from one mindfulness or mental uh mindset course to the next and he goes this guy's 22 years old and he's done havasana meditation this type of breathing work, this type of journaling, all this stuff. And he's only 22 years old. I've done all those. He's like, I've done just a few of those things. It takes years to master or get to an enlightened place with these types of things. And I, I'm going to give it, give it its width and breath of like, yeah, it's very true. Like most people don't find an enlightened zone until they go deep. And I mean, deep. That's why monks are in a non-distracted place no woman practice what is it gratitude meditation and chores all day and you know they're kind of in those movies and they're the mystic arts type of folks and then you have people now where it's like we're teaching our brains this adhd type of form of go to this go to that next thing swipe right swipe left up down. TikTok behavior TikTok behavior and he was kind of going like there's just absolutely no way that you can have that depth of knowledge about something and i kind of go you know Maybe, maybe not, because the way people's minds are in this culture, I think some people and like the, I'm going to go back to your point of the book is people do choose their own adventure now mm-hmm. with their life because they try many things, especially in this generation where they try many things. And by the third year, I think it was something along the lines of like every two years to three years, someone's changing their job and they're leveling up. Most people have that mindset back in the day. It's commitment, loyalty to a position, 45 years, 60 years in a position, you get a pension, right? And you're, you're living your life. But now people are realizing like, it might be different. It might be different. So I guess it just depends. What are your thoughts on that, Marcos? Like, what do you think about finding enlightenment through, you know, task switching or like, you know, focus switching instead of sticking to one thing? Yeah. Um, I feel like, <clears throat> right, like, uh, that's, a, that's kind of deep. Um, focusing and switching, you know, focusing on one thing has never been something that I've been strong at, right? Yeah. Um, again, like, going back to, like, my fitness upbringing, it's always been CrossFit, right? Like, be really, be be good at a variety of things, yeah. but never a specialist because yeah. specialty behaviors will limit your interaction with, you know, something that might, again, lead to something profound, right? Mm -hmm. I guess the same thing here was like, you do need to be focused for a period of time, but you you have to be open enough to bring in outside influenced ideas and the nuances of those ideas. And don't be so dogmatic about one approach, right? And I mean, we witnessed this last Friday, ironically enough, right? Um, How... There, there are, you know, it may not apply to the circumstances yet, right? So to be so focused and narrow-minded can potentially not allow for something that can be really impactful and beneficial to, you know, start start taking roots, right? Um, you know, we'll go back, let's go back to this example, right? We just talked about mouth, mouth taping for nose breathing and how there can be some therapeutic benefits and the data on it is still kind of limited just to give you guys context we had a team meeting on friday and marcos brought up i'm going to do some mouth taping (laughs) i have some experience in that i've read a few books and this we're going to bring it all back to the outwitting the devil book guys don't worry we're going to bring it all back this is a tangent episode this is a tangent episode but um this kind of goes in line with the concept of social contagion um Mm -hmm. and your environment uh, which in the book basically means like, are you always going with the status quo? Is it just what you believe, or is there new data out there to suggest something different? So let's talk about this mouth. Hey, to pause you for one second, Seamus. Literally, it literally like in the book. I have it bookmarked right now. 
My greatest weapon over human beings consists of two secret principles by which I gain control of their minds. Mm. I will first speak to the principle of habit through which I silently enter the minds of people. Mm. Literally, like that's the, the mind, the habit, the habit of being, again, well-educated, but yeah. maybe narrow-minded in this, maybe having too much tunnel vision to look at other potential benefits of this thing, right? Exactly. And granted, like when I brought it up, we were kind of done with the conversation about like the nuances of you know, clients and patients for the, for the day. And they're like, what are we, what are you doing? I was like, I'm considering doing this really outlandish thing, you know, yeah. you know, got some, some like, Oh really? Why the hell would you do that? And it's like, well, you know, I don't know. The jury's still out, but if there's a proposed benefit and it's 55 cents a night for me to potentially do this thing, yeah, why wouldn't I try it? Yeah. And it's eight hours of your sleep. So the concept guys here is we were having a conversation and this comes back to outwitting the devil, the concept of, Marcos is trying something new and finding a new definitive step in his fitness. Mm -hmm. In the book, Out in the Devil, there's a concept called social contagion or like the education system where when we are brought up in it and a lot of people will turn down newer ideas that are yet to be validated, which this this one is validated. Um, but I think it, it, it was missed. It was kind of a yeah it was missed upon some people and what we're trying to say here is the concept of mouth taping is new there's a few books called Bre breath by james nestor has a lot of studies and he experienced it on self and then there's another book called jaws by dr so somebody else but basically brings the concept of nasal breathing so we'll we'll bring it back to some health and longevity yeah. And nasal breathing has known to be the most superior way of breathing, especially when you sleep, because it'll help with sleep. So many sleep apnea issues and sleep issues for athletes, performance metrics, like they're there, right? They're there. But you have to kind of read the book and practice that for yourself. I've been doing this for a while. I take my mouth when I go to sleep. And it's been great. It's been awesome. I sleep less. I sleep more profound and i have really great sleep i do don't you, is that purely subjective or do you have like objective measures too do you have like a hrv or something else that like so i was doing hrv for some time and my numbers were like in the 60s which is like a little high and then now came down to like 50s and i was like oh cool um i was using sleep score and my sleep score at one point said something along the lines of like my rem went up like a 37 minutes i was like oh cool so that's why i was feeling like i didn't need more but i don't always uh have quantitative data just because i'm not always about the quantitative self i think i kind of just subjectively i feel great you know and i think subjectively sometimes there's something there yeah. but well you can quantify your sub your subjectivity if you rate it on a scale you know what i mean like yeah like there's which is a concept i've been trying to play with in in my coaching is like bringing bringing quantif quantifiers to a subjective thing yeah because again like realistically people can drift even after one week of like things just not feeling like they're progressing when it comes to like scale weight or yeah. visual improvement but yet again like like you know it's been a week like how much you know how much do we really expect and sometimes the numbers don't always behave in the manner that is mathematical in nature yeah. right yeah. um we know this by the study of like the quote overfeeding study where they gave a thousand extra calories to people's baselines and they all gained at a very different rate. Right. Yeah. It, the study he was talking about, this is a really good one. Um, <laughs> Sorry. You're, I'm not, you're, you're like on the edges, but guys, I love this study. So, um, yeah. so right, we'll bring it back. I promise. We'll bring, bring it back. back. This study, if you're, if I'm referencing it correctly, this study gave people over like a 12 to 16 week period, um, an extra thousand calories based off of their baseline. One group, uh, they're basically looking to see if they were um, what kind of responders they were. Um, some people responded by gaining body fat, right? And then there were some outliers, and this is where this is where mathematics doesn't always work. But there's a generality, and this is just a weird outlier. Some people didn't gain weight, and then some people lost weight. Here's why: they were given that extra thousand calories, but because they were eating more, they were just moving more <laughs> and they had more ticks they had more like little things and they were just fidgeting and like why wouldn't someone gain weight or lose weight with an extra thousand calories it was just really weird well you also have to equate the fact that like mathematically yeah true you can gain weight like that but at the same time you didn't see the fact that they were moving more or some of these people weren't you know so um 
yeah. Again, calories are important. Definitely stay within a good set of calories, good protein. But yeah. some people will have different uh, different responses. Different, you know? different objective results. But subjectively, those people may have been like, I feel like I'm on a freaking 10 right now. I'm mm-hmm. on the world. And that's something that you could have quantified. And same with you know you with the taping and the sleep is like, yeah. again, when it comes to, at first <clears> – <throat> Data is cool, but it's only as good as you maybe making some sort of influenced decision to do something different afterwards. Yeah, there's the science, right? Like you have the science and then you have the art of showcasing it, right? The art of delivering it. Yeah. Yeah. So so for for me, if I'm gonna make this study, it could just be like, man, like I I don't have any sinus issues anymore. I can I can breathe better. Uh, when I go and do like cardio, I feel like I'm getting more air in. Like there's there's like likely things I can relate it to that would make me want to keep the behavior around, right? And so mm-hmm. I'm kind of quantifying those things. And uh, you know, um, just like with you know, when you change the influence of a diet, right? Like same thing, you know. Um, right now I'd like to influence my diet more to, you know, start creating a natural deficit. Yeah. But at the same time, like, man, but I feel so good. I'd rather just go try to perform a little more and keep yeah. my food the same. So yeah. same thing like you just talked about with that study. Um, and again, like it was the whole point of that conversation was like, hey, what are you what are you guys thinking about doing right now? Is there anything that you guys are considering um, for yourselves? For yourself, not, you know, not our patients. Yeah, not ourselves. the patients, yeah. And so then it, I think, I don't know if he like hit mute or he didn't hear that part, but you know, I know that you've like, you started talking about it because you're passionate about experimenting with things and you know, yeah. the culture of like where you're at versus clients in Las Vegas, right? Um, and you know, I, again, it, it it was a good topic. It actually was controversial. Like, very what you need to do needs to needs to make sense really at, at all things, right? Like, BFR could be kind of categorized in the same thing. It doesn't. That's blood flow restriction for y'all guys, or <laughs> yeah, so training, BFR, or not too, yeah. Which bodybuilders have used for a number of years before they started looking at, you know, this from a a rehabilitation standpoint. Yeah, now, I think the first study was like 2006 with like Japanese like. It was, it was, uh, yeah, it was uh, in a, it was actually mainly from wounded veterans, wounded vets, yeah, wounded vets or people that were discharged because they got literally blown up by an IED. And they're trying to figure out how to hypertrophy the muscles without killing them. Yes. Right. And so now we have a a new era of speeding up recovery from injuries as a result of, you know, we'll call it the fringe data. So I'm like, cool. Like this is kind of fringe. Like I like experimenting. It's not like it was. I've spent way more money on something that I've used far less, you know, yeah. um, point in case the BFR cuffs that I bought, they were experimental. Um, yeah. <laughs> which they, I will say this though. I have given them to somebody that's putting them to use now. So while I had my fun with it, it doesn't necessarily, you know, I, I do think there will be an appropriate time to include those for a phase of my own training. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I do see the value of like what um, he's doing in his practice. Right. So, you know, the, again, the, the big concept is <laughs> that, you know, we're, you know, br- to bring it kind of like back to what we're talking about, right? Yeah, with the book. Uh, with the book, right? Like the mind is a very powerful weapon, right? Mm-hmm. And your mind dictates so freaking much, right? It obviously swayed the conversation a certain way. It, even it made, did. It even made you like try to start apologizing because you thought you did something wrong. I, that- I knew that like what, so whenever I speak guys and this is, <laughs> This is why we have this podcast, so I can talk about things that I like to talk about. <laughs> I have to read the room a little bit because that room, it was cool to talk about it. At that point, I feel like it was a conversation among peers. It was among peers. But in this conversation, we had someone else. I'm just going to say an authority figure in the field. And he was kind of like, the bunch. Of, he's just at that point, he's like, a bunch of this stuff is wasteful. And I'm like, I don't think he understood the concept we were talking about. We we're talking about ourselves. We will not talk yeah, about yeah. patients. We we're not talking about, and I, I don't, I don't put that. That's why I kind of apologize because I was like, yeah, I know. I, I feel like I took over the conversation because I was talking about sleep and the sleep habits. And this comes to the fact of the social contagion guys. So I'm going to bring it back. Like this person is educated. This guy's high tier value respected. Literally Long wrote the book on anti-aging. Re- literally wrote that a book. book on it or a few of them actually. A few of them. And yeah. is the head of all these things. So you shut your mouth when you're listening to this guy, right? But then you also go in the back of your head like, I don't think that some of these people have continued to see some of the newer nuanced things 
that are beyond the basics. And the basics are the basics, and the basics will always win. They aren't sexy. They always will. But however, again, bringing it back to experimenting, trying out new things. Marcos are in that time of our life where we're going to try new things with our performance because we are there. We are that young. We are that lean. We are that like performance type of athlete. Don't speak for yourself. I'm not very lean. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm still trying to get, you know, try, trying, to, trying to perform better, trying to perform better. All right. Um, so with that being said, we're experiencing with new things. And obviously we're still doing the basics, right? Marcos, we're still training a few times per week. Uh, we're hydrating. Uh, we're eating the right macro perspectives or <laughs> macros with that being said, but <laughs> you know, getting our steps in, which are cool. But with that being said, it is good to be nuanced and try some of these things. And again, what is the investment to risk outcome? And I'm going to bring it back to the social contagion, which is you can be educated and have all these things, but when new ideas come along, I think it's best to be able to look at that without a judgment, right? And not feel that traditional ways are far superior or uh, the only way. Um, and not to disrespect the traditional outcomes or the, the traditional authorities on a concept of longevity, but to also go, okay, cool. What is this new data saying? Again, it's just data, right? Like with the BFR stuff, it's just data. What is it giving us? We're just going to see what it does. And from there, we're able to just go, okay, how can I use this to my advantage? And for me, the mouth taping I use to my advantage by just going to sleep with my mouth tape. And whenever I work out, I just try to nasal breathe. That is it. Um, and I've seen my performance a lot better on the jujitsu mats. I've seen my performance a lot better in my day-to-day -day energy. And even just in my stress, because I can just nasal breathe instead of breathe through my mouth. So, um, yeah. And you know, what's funny though, Yeah. So, to just to wrap this concept up, when it came to giving a prescription for high intensity interval training at the time of the inception of it, do you know that he just threw out some numbers and see if it would stick? Oh yeah. They, those were very much uh, made up. Numbers. You know, it was yeah. just, it was pure. He's like, I don't know. I just kind of made it up and it made sense. And that was like, that was the, the definition he gave me, but now he has the, the data to back up with all these patients that have been success stories based on clear cut, defined prescription protocols that he, had yet to really observe or that he may have observed in a couple of things yeah. based on the literature. Like you know, he's like, when I got that answer, I was like looking, I was like, why is it 0.85 and why is it 1.1? 1 .1? Like, why are these associative numbers? Why were we really telling, telling people? No. And sure enough, it was like, Hey, this is meaning that they're, they're not just touching anaerobic and stopping. They're, they're working in that capacity for a little while yeah. and they're recovering to a heart rate that would have been indicative of aerobic. Right. Um, and so, you know, the guys that give you context, like when we, when we do an evaluation with our, our patients and our other job, um, we have access to a VO2 machine, which is a fabulous piece of equipment that gives you your true aerobic heart rate. So where you are going to be quote, burning body fat as your form of energy or, or fat as the form of energy. Um, and then also when you're using protein, glucose and all those things at that higher end, yeah. like the pure quantifiable versions. But again, someone had to quantify that, you know, and, and do all those things. Like they created these things. Um, and again, they're like, Hey, 10% over where you have a, an even threshold of CO2 to oxygen relative to atmosphere, right. Yeah. Is where they, they said that that's probably a good threshold to try to strive to get to, um, and fitness level would determine if you can get way beyond it or how long you can stay in that zone. And it's really cool. Cause you know, anatomy and physiology for people, you know, when you give it a new stressor, it adapts and it's, it's cool. That's what it is. And I love that. I love that. And again, just to bring it back, like. He was just like us when he created these. These things were made 27 years ago. So like he was experimenting um, yeah. and he was probably going against the grain or non or, or traditional things. Because what was a traditional thing 90 years ago, right? Oh, the only way to lose fat is to be doing an hour, hour and a half of like low mm -hmm. steady state of cardio. Like that's that's ACSM. That's like all these guys. And it's like, uh, no, you know, so now he's quantified that. And I think I think we're just kind of in that place, guys, where. You know, we're trying, we're, we're throwing things out there. We're experimenting. Yeah, willingness to, all right, to bring it back to the book, right? Yeah, bring, bring it back to the book, man. All right, I'll go to this page here, right, where um, it literally talks about things. Oh, that's the wrong one. Where is it? Come on. Stupid dog ears. I should put a little, uh, should have put some uh, other annotation marks here. <laughs> right? <laughs> 
we are expressing, you know, in terms of a spot that might lead to drifting, caution, right? We're thinking it through. We're having a plan before we're acting. And doing oh one God. behavior as a result of listening to other people talk about it, hearing Oh, it my through, God. Right? Yes. Um, and so when you're not expressing caution to something, you're just like, whatever, I'm just going to shoot from the hip, right? You know, you, it, depending on where your subconscious lies, you're not going to have the ability to maybe perform or stay on plan. So, you know, that's, you know, again, all these things here, again, like if it were to be like, this is the roadmap of making a smart goal, right? In a sense, right? Yeah. This would be a great way of looking at it because again, the, the seven principles to attain spiritual, mental, and physical freedom is the section. And then how, you know, how the quote, the devil is, swaying you to go the, you know, against the grain, going back to like least cores of resistance or becoming lazy is again, that definitiveness of purpose, creating yeah. mastery over yourself, learning from adversity, controlling environments. Like you talked about on the last microbite for yourself. Right. Yeah. Um, and your associations, right. Giving things the proper amount of time, giving it enough time to actually be positive, you know, versus negative. Right. Mm -hmm. So that you can develop the wisdom behind the thing you're seeking. Yep. Harmony, yep. Right. So, you know, how you're making sure you're acting appropriately, but also dominating your own mental influence on the things you're trying to overcome. Yeah. And then expressing caution, because of course, like you, you, we're all worried that there's some level of failure. It's like, I'm going to apply shit. I did this when it came to trying a, a, uh, a gambling strategy <laughs> a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> let's hear it. Let's hear it. All right. So it's the 24 eight strategy. I was very cautious about like just testing it out on a phone app for a little while. And of course, when you're doing it at home, you're not wasting any money. So it's really low. Like you're not, you're, low risk. Right? Low there's, risk. there's no risk, right? We got to the table, uh, literally it was not this Saturday, but the previous Saturday. And I, you know, we, I blow through the money like that. And I actually learned really quickly. I had a failure point, but it was a learning experience with losing 75 bucks realistically or a hundred bucks. It was not like next to nothing. Right. Yeah. Um, and in the moment, I knew that I had the ability to lose $75 on one roll or one, one spin, right? Because you're covering two thirds of the board to lower your potential risk factor by betting the first third and the second third, right? Yeah. And then you're playing singles, singles or whatever that dollar amount is in the next 12. Yeah. So if you play one on each one and your bet, you're like, you're basically hedging your bet here, right? Yeah. Um, and in doing so, I, you know, you still have a, like a, four out of 36, so you have like a, you know, uh, four out of 38 chance of potentially losing on a normal standard wheel. But sure enough, the ones on the strip, they have three freaking greens. <laughs> so immediately the odds were skewed against me a little bit more. Well, you and, are the mathematician, so this is your zone. <laughs> no, I know. But so now I have uh, one, two, three, four. I have five potential losers versus four, mm. right? Um, and in which, you know, again, you're kind of hedging the bet. You have like a 90% probability of at least pushing and or winning, which again is a really good odd for like a very minimal investment. But I was an idiot and I was splitting my bets and I was changing my odds of winning. So when mm -hmm. I actually won, like I actually like won the, the, the time I should have actually come into the money. Guess what happened, Seamus? No, I realized no. it was only paying out nine to one. So I actually yeah. lost money on that hand relative to my actual initial bet. And I was like, oh shit, like I, I screwed up because... I didn't have enough money to play the strategy appropriately based on the minimum of the table. And again, yeah. like, am I mad that I lost a hundred dollars? Absolutely. Actually, I got enough argument with my wife about this. It was pretty funny, but I learned so much out of that. I was like, you know what? If I am going to ever attempt a strategy with something, I need to be alone. I can't be quote having fun um, and doing a math strategy for a gambling game where again, like most people are just gambling to have a little bit of fun and blow some steam. Right. And yeah, I, I brought math into it. My wife's like, you're supposed to be out here having fun. You took the fun away. Literally, it felt like we just blew through. It was a little too much. It was a little too much in your head. It was, but I still want to go back and try the strategy. It hasn't yeah. It hasn't changed the fact that like, this is an interesting way of potentially, it's a grinding strategy. You're not winning a ton at a time. But like, yeah. hey, what if I, I mean, 90% odds of pushing or winning some money? Like, I'm pretty sure most people will take that bet. If there's a 90% chance of supplements. Yeah, 901, like, come on, dude. It. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think it comes back. Like we'll bring it back to the book of like caution and 
let's just talk about caution and like that concept of being mm -hmm. able to get to your goal. It's good to have some caution and plan things out. However, what I would say to that is don't forget that you got to take action too, right? Mm -hmm. and I'm speaking to you here, Marcos, in a sense that I took action, dude. I took the hundred dollars and I went, yeah. it, even though I, something was telling me I needed to play this at GVR and not on the, at the Venetian and everything in life was telling me, Hey, don't do it. Don't do it. Like, yeah. you know, like here's here's the you know the, the, the devil and then the there's the angel the shoulder the devil's like you know you want to try to win some money here right boy and then you got the angel over here saying like you know like maybe there's a reason why you're not playing at the place you thought that you should be playing yeah you yeah. know in my head i was like you know and it was even hard to even come by getting actual cash there were so many things in there but i was like ah, yeah. screw it. i'll be fine learned a valuable lesson and uh point in case my wife will never gamble with me again <laughs> there you go you learn valuable lessons i mean it really comes back to the caution and, and, and planning. I think you can plan all you want, yet you got to take action. And I think sometimes you planning something gets so trifled because, and, and this, this happens in day and age now with, I, I get into this and I'll, I'll say this for people listening to the podcast. I love podcasts. It gets to the point that maybe I have a problem in my life. Mm -hmm. And instead of solving my problem, I'm sitting in my comfort by listening to 50,000 YouTube videos and podcasts and audiobooks about the problem instead of going, why don't I just take action on my problem? <laughs> right? It's so easy to educate yourself and go like, let me, let me research this. Let me find the reason why. Let me do this and realize like the longer you do that, the more you re reinforce that behavior, you're just honestly sitting in comfort, not solving the problem. You're just I don't know, basically just doing like mental masturbation, like just kind of like <laughs> indulging. You're just indulging on like, oh, I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to figure this out. Did you figure it out yet? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's what I have to say about about caution. Be about it. Don't talk about it, man. There's a reason why like that's the quote I use on my website. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. you know, don't just talk about it. Actually be about it. It's something you know all of us like ah oh, i read this thing all right cool did you do it right yeah like, you know if you're too cautious then you never get anywhere and you never have a failure moment and again going back to the book is it a temporary well was it a temporary uh man it's like a temporary setback or temporary, temporary, temporary defeat or an actual failure was it i think that's what it was or was it temporary failure and act or an actual defeat yeah like be getting them interchanged whatever concept remains like it, it's either temporary and you're going to use it as a learning experience no. Or you're like, I did X input, I got Y result, and that's going to be the same pace every time, you know? Yeah. I, of course, like that's, it's like, again, did you give it enough time, right? Yeah. Just, yeah. On the scale every Monday and your weight isn't going down. It's like, well, how good were you actually being over the weekend? Right? Exactly. So maybe you should do Monday, Friday. Maybe you should do Tuesday, Friday, right? If you're, if you're only weighing yourself once or twice a week, maybe you yeah. should look at the average and you should look at the behavior that's associated with yeah. what's going on, Right. Um, I was talking with a client, like they're saying, like, I'm in a plateau and they're <laughs> arguing with me, like, I'm on a plateau. And I'm like, what do you mean? It's like, I've been, th I've, this person's over three bills. So I'm like, there's no way someone over three bills will be on a plateau just because it's just so much weight to lose. Um, he's like, I've been 312 for two days. And I was like, two days, like, do you hear yourself? Like how many days? Like I've been three thirteen for two, three days. I'm like, okay, can you check back with me by the end of the week? And they're like, oh, I'm 309 now. I'm like. There you go. Like, <laughs> there you, like, there you go. Like, you just didn't give it more than like two days. And it always fluctuates. It's just you got to give these things time. Come on. Yeah, you have to remember, like, failure is a man made circumstance. So you literally in your head can, you know, be progressing or failing. And, yeah. you know, that's, that's where I think the, the book, I mean, obviously it's led to a lot of, a lot of tangent topic conversation here today and you know i think the drifts the just the fact like again the biggest key takeaways was the drift you know temporary defeat and not an actual failure mm -hmm. right and things that would cause you know your actual you know drifts right and yeah. um so <clears throat> i'm not gonna say what i use but i typed in something somewhere to get an output you know yeah may have been in google may have been in chat gpt who knows? We'll, we'll, we'll leave it to that. But I asked the question, like, what is it that 
how does how how is it creating drifts? Like how how does the the devil here yeah. create them? And um, it says the ability to create drifts is by exploiting individuals' weaknesses, right? Such as their tendency yeah. to procrastinate, doubt themselves, or succumb to peer pressure. The devil may also use distractions, temptations, and other external influences to steer individuals away from their goals and into unproductive or harmful behaviors. Yeah. Right? Procrastination, doubting yourself, and succumbing to peer pressure. I mean, so if you can sure up your ability to get work done in a timely manner, you know, create more positive, actionable things, right? Mm -hmm. Or as I like to call them, pats versus ants, right? Yeah. <laughs> or pants pants versus ants like positive actionable non-negotiable things versus automatic negative thoughts um yeah might, tra might trademark that um might already be trademarked that you, can you put that as a title this this is gonna be like a great uh, <laughs> ants in your pants yeah ants in your pants, ants out of your pants yeah um we could do that um but inevitably right like there's distractions temptations and other external influences right can we use that fact that like when the devil talks about this, we're talking about right now, we're talking about in the form of fear, yeah, stress, right. and all that. He uses the concept of hypnotic rhythm. Yeah. What do you, what do you, I had a, I had a hard time really understanding quote hypnotic rhythm. What was your, what was your take on that? He was just saying basically what you just said there, mindlessness, like having habits that we just mm. mindlessly do autopilot and we're just autopilot. And it's hard for us to break autopilot just because it's, it's ingrained in us so strongly that it's just, it's either beliefs at this point or it's just automatic actions that like, if you try to break it, you're gonna, you're gonna run into some resistance. Um, it's funny I, that that was a chapter and literally like you just finally clarified what that meant. Yeah, <laughs> was, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I think, you know, it comes back to what you're saying here is, is we, we can all be so mindless with our health. Uh, you know, obviously this is what our podcast is. So we'll talk about that, but we can all be so mindless with our health, but at the same time, a lot of that mindlessness might've just been learned. Like we might've just been exposed to certain foods growing up. We might've been exposed to certain behaviors growing up. And these things, if we're trying to break our health habits, it is so hard because we've just been lulled into a hypnosis that like, Oh, this is, this type of food, this is that type of food and this type of movement, that type of movement. Like it might be difficult for somebody to realize they can reach their health, you know, by breaking those, those habits and they don't have to break them down so difficultly. You can use those habits to, yeah. to win, you know um, you know, for example, I'll say like, for example, a lot of people think, Hey, you have to completely eat on a diet for you to lose weight. And it's like, no, you can eat the same things. We just want you to have smaller portions. And for anyone hearing this, they might be like, well, I need the extreme. I need that for my mind to feel like I'm moving towards an exam, like moving towards my definitive purpose, like the book says, where it's like, I get that, but I'm using your habits, your routines to make you win. So if you like going to McDonald's and you like to get the quick foods and like you like to do these things, well, we're going to use those habits and routines until we can get you to the point where you're more mindful to, to go ahead and change your whole lifestyle. Um, yeah, yeah. Because it's so easy to go back into what he was saying would be a hypnotic, a rhythm, man. A hypnotic rhythm. So um, yeah, that's, that's, I'd say that's a good analogy there. Yeah, but, man, that was good. Cause like you literally like are talking about it. Like you're going, you're drifting back into that, you know, your autonomous state. Uh, that's all, I needed that word. I needed autopilot. That's the like, autopilot. That's yeah, all I needed. It's like, damn, this this like, like I don't. I just, just didn't like the, the term. Right again, like there's some terms in here that probably need to be updated, but we didn't. Blah 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 blah. Like it was like a speaking <laughs> of the book, and <laughs> I uh, I like your de definition in my head now. Okay, cool. Um, shoot, man, we need to start a book club. Is what this really means. Um, <laughs> but. You and I laugh when you said McDonald's because I have a funny story about that, and I'll end on that because it was pretty hilarious. Well, um, end it there, yeah, yeah. But the, the the mind and mastery of the mind and mastery of self, and you know, you know, maybe I'd be able to identify where where drifts happen, right? Like you like you just said, um, like how do you know that you're starting to drift, right? And I think that having some examples are, are helpful. While the word is catchy, right? Of course, like and you know, that's where I like I like. I've used it in conversation and, and calls here lately. Yeah, same. You're dealing with some resistance, 
All right. Are you finding yourself drifting back into old, you know, habits or habits and routines? Yeah. Things, habits and routines. You know, um, you know, you could even use like relationships. Like, we'll use like a relationship for an example because everyone's done this. Like, have you ever had a fight with your wife and never you were <laughs> never? Obviously, <laughs> I'm perfect. Okay. <laughs> I am the supreme being. All right. <laughs> I am the devil. No, like, have you ever had a fight with your wife where it's like, they explained like, hey, you do this every single time. Like you, you have this face like, what do you mean I do this every time? Yeah, say everything again. Like, you know, you're getting really mad. Um, yes. But you're trying to be more mindful of the way you respond. And, you know, it's getting heated, but you're still trying to be taking a breath. You know, you're trying to remind yourself, hey, like maybe it's I do this. And then next thing you know, you're going back to your same rhythms. You say the exact same words. You say the same things. And it's like, dang, how did that happen? Again, going back to what I said at the beginning of this podcast is people always go back to root code unless it's trained out of them and you have to be mindful. Those are the moments. Again, going back to what I said, chaos ensues. This is chaos. This is you making order in between is that moment where you have to be present. If your chaos and that like, let's just say that fight is happening. That's the chaos. This is you in that moment. If you can create space that's where you will flourish and be able to make a new response. Mm -hmm. And you have to take that response and you have to keep using and persistent. It's just a trained behavior. You got to keep training it. So yeah. um, I yeah. hope that makes sense. <laughs> I know it does. And I think this, that like summed up, like I can, I guess we can sum up kind of a few of the drifts after that and kind of close this out. But yeah. you know, if you're finding yourself a little, like having some aimlessness or confusion about what you should be doing, you lack a clear cut and specific goal in life. And that's where you're drifting from your definitiveness of purpose. Right. Perfect, yeah. And, you know, instead of, uh, you know, if you're not mastering any behaviors and you're not remaining in control, then your emotions are getting the hold of you. And this is the drift from self mastery, right? Mm -hmm. It's, it's learning to like get over the fact that emotions are going to be there and you're going to want to dive into that pint of ice cream because that MF -er did something stupid and yeah. you know, your boyfriend dumped you or whatever, you know, and, or nothing, nothing else sounded good that night. Um, but it's just, you know, figuring out how to remain in control. Yeah. Um, and if you're, you know, uh, if you're having a tendency to view adversity as a negative experience versus the opportunity to learn and grow, kind of like my yeah. example about losing money. Yeah. Again, like it sucks. I don't, like, don't want to do that again. No, I, I kind of want to do it again, but just see like, is the strategy actually worth it? You know, yeah, newer strategy, newer yeah. approach. Yeah. 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 And again, like I can't do that in the social you know, arrangement, like with my wife and I both gambling, like we do when we go out on a date night. So, you know, I don't know when I'll ever find the time to do it alone, but I'm gonna find a time to just at least try to learn again from that experience that was negative for this go around. Wow. Um, the tendency to be influenced by external factors, right? Such as others' opinions or your pantry or, you know, um, you know <laughs> things of that. Other on social media. I mean, I look at social media and I'll see like, yeah, oh, the new Oreo thing here is like, I got to go get that. Oh, shoot. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like the opinions of others. Macros matter more. You can have Oreos. It's fine, right? Of yeah. course. But like, rather than you maintaining your own independent thought about like, yo, when I'm eating really healthy and clean and I get those stuff out of there, I don't really crave them. But like, you know, I, then you see it and you're like, oh, I probably should try to work that in. And then you just start going overboard. So yeah, like that could be your drift, yeah. your controlling environment, right? Yeah. And then lastly, like a drift from time would literally be, Again, that tendency to procrastinate or just waste time. And I told you this, I, I don't know if I told that to you or if I said it on the last podcast, but I'm using, uh, what is it? Downtime. Thank you. Um, in reverse. Cause downtime is usually like, okay, like you're done with the day. Like you had, you hit your you social media. First. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm doing it in reverse. Downtime is my work day. So like downtime is like, you can't access these apps right now. Right. I'm creating yeah. a little bit of something that is not letting time slip away from me. So I'm more productive to achieve my goals. And God dang it, in three weeks time, literally like every time I see the grayed out Instagram, because it's right there on the home screen to let myself yeah. know, hey, like you get to do this later. You know, I know it's part of what you do for work at times, but like not right now. Like yeah. get your calls done, talk to your people, get your business. Awesome. Done. Yeah, I get it done. I think, you know, this is really good. I, I want to say like, Look at yourself a little bit more for the reader, like me, myself, Marcos, like just look at yourself a little bit more. And I'm just going to be honest, just just rip your life into these quadrants of time, money, health, wealth, whatever it is, like whatever your goal is. But just look at yourself and rip yourself apart and go, 
where am I drifting? Right. And just ask yourself, like, where am I drifting? And then look at your schedule. If you don't have a schedule, please have one. Like, make sure you write that out every week and go, I have a goal. Am I putting it on the schedule? Am I finding ways to literally have it there? I coach a lot of young people and they'll be like, man, Seamus, like, this is so hard for me to put like two, three hours into this plan. And I just go bonkers because I'm like, you have a goal of losing 50, 200 pounds. And all I'm asking is for you to put two to three hours into a week. Let me see your phone real quick. Let's go to the time. Just kind of like Marcos. Oh, look at that. There's eight hours spent on YouTube, social media, Facebook. You really tell me you can't spend three hours working, meal prepping? Just look at that because when you can see yourself in totality, kind of like your finances, like a stock Excel sheet of it, like you can then start managing it. I think that's the importance, right, Marcos, is being able to look at yourself objectively, add up the numbers and go, here's point A. I want to get to point B. What does point B look like? What does Seamus from point A and from point B look like? And when you do that, man, the drifting, I'm going to tell you right now, I've seen it in my life. I know you've seen it in yours, Marcos. The drifting becomes more apparent and you go, no, no, no. I'm done with that drifting. Like for me, watching video, watching movies and video games all week long. Now I only do that on Saturdays. Oh, okay, cool. You've taken the drifting and you've consolidated it, right? And you realize how far you can grow with that power of persistence and be able to go. I'm not going to be lulled in this hypnotic rhythm. I'm not going to be lulled by fear. I'm not going to be lulled by like other people contagion my thoughts. I'm just going to step into the zone that I want to be me. And I'm going to let chaos Chaos is always going to be there, but I'm going to find a way to be the guard of my life and I'm going to push, I'm going to break out the weeds and I'm going to make it happen. So that's my little cliche thing there. <laughs> that, was, that was good. That was deep, you know? God, I mean, couldn't have said it any better myself, but I mean, that, that, yeah, well, I think let's just we'll cut it there, man. I mean, that, <laughs> that, that kind of sums it up in terms of like, you know, how this was kind of profound. And again, while there might be things that are causing that behavior. You know, I think if there's ever things that are, that you can identify, like Seamus said, as negative, what can you add into it or usher in that would create a positive? More yeah. positives, the law of attraction. I mean, I guess this book is basically the inverse relationship of that. And um, that's why I think I liked it because it came from a, the other angle. And then it's like, oh yeah, like I am contracting negative behaviors. Here's what happens. Here's what it creates. And then I think his other, Again, this was like supposed to be the the subsequent 1938 to uh, yeah, yeah. Think yeah, it was grow rich. The, yeah, the follow up think and grow rich. So like you have the, the positive end and this was supposed to be the negative end and what that could be. And then I think together they'll, you know, I didn't read Think and Grow Rich first. So I'm now I'm interested to be like, ooh, you know, I have like yeah, I have the evil versus good story, not the good versus evil story here. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of cool. But I, I do want to, I do want to yeah. end on my personal story about McDonald's. Dude, and, please. I think and, everyone needs to hear this. <laughs> okay. So one, I have a judgmental friend and he's like, why the hell were you at McDonald's? I'll start there. And I, he's, I'm like, because it's cheap meat and my kids will eat the patties only. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, um, but they have a, they have a, you know, buy, they have a buy two of these items, get one for a dollar kind of deal going on right now. Yeah. So you can get like four nuggets and a, a McDouble for like, I don't know, four bucks, five bucks, whatever it is cheap. Right. I mean, to feed my kids, like it, it's not like a daily thing. It's probably not even a, a, a every a other weekly thing. thing. You know, we're yeah. just, you know, sometimes it's like, you know, hey, they don't actually like eating. They like the idea of going there. They like eating a couple of like the protein sources and that's it. Yeah. I order the four piece nugget and I order the McDouble and I say plain, no cheese. Mm. Knowing full well, the McDouble, you know, it's kind of like the in and out double double where it comes with two slices of cheese, right? I asked the lady to read it back to me. You know, it was a large fry, <laughs> a four piece nugget and the McDouble plain, no cheese. And she hit me with attitude and me and my wife <laughs> quickly look at one another. We're like, that was uncalled for. Someone's having a bad day. Right. Yeah. All right, cool. So she was upset that she's like, yeah, it was a three, three piece item order. Do you think I'm going to F this up? And it's like, yeah, because it's happened multiple times at different locations. 
And no one seems to know how to not put cheese on this thing. So I know it's a real hard ask, but can you make sure that it happens? The hardest of all asks, so right? Hard. We get to the door, we pay for it. You know, I, I ask again because this has happened multiple times. Can can you read it back to me one more time? The lady that you know, but she was wasn't very nice. I think she was on her way out for the day. You know, she wasn't she was in a bad mood. He's like, yeah, plain, no cheese. All right, cool. We go get it. Open it up. Plain with cheese. Of course. All right. Boom. We knock on the door. You can't even, mind you, you can't enter a, a McDonald's anymore. You can only go through a drive through Yeah. Oh, my God. So all the touchscreen and, you know, the automation of employees. I mean, there's basically only cooks in the kitchen. So no one has any customer service anymore. Um, and, uh, you know, the manager comes up. And my wife is the first one to deal with the first manager. And she was livid. Why the heck did you let you know this person? Uh, you know this person come into the store, yada yada. And uh, it's like you know, the, well the, the other younger you know kid, he must have been like eighteen maybe, you know, or sixteen. I was like, I'm so sorry, ma'am. We're gonna take care of it for you. You know, just customer service was great. Manager like, flips out um, on her. I'm like, whoa, okay, you know, cool. And is, is it right? And like we're driving off with it. I was like, did you check it? And she's like, no. I was like, open it up. Wrong again. So we have to go back a second time. We go in. <sighs> And I, you know, get the same kid. I'm like, man, I'm, I just want to make this right. My kids are allergic to cheese, right? Like, you know, and again, I knew that I was that asshole person that said, hey, make double with no cheese. So I hear them over talking over. They go, this guy, what does he, what does he want from me? This is a plain McDouble. And he's like, he wants, the guy's like, he doesn't want any cheese on it. It's like the McDouble comes with cheese. It's just like, yeah, that's why he explicitly asked at multiple stops not to get the cheese. So he wants a double hamburger. Why didn't he just order a double hamburger? I'm like, is that on the menu anywhere? you know in my head and he's like making a fuss about it like you know mfing in the back and like saying all this stuff and now this time it's me standing at the door not my wife and so he turns the corner immediately sees me puts on a smile because obviously i guess i'm intimidating with a, a beard and i'm not a female anymore um and his whole disposition changed she got a different manager i got a different one but he's over here talking all this crap about like you know blah 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 this person just needs to learn how to order properly and then he sees me and his whole demeanor changed and I laughed because, you know, I'm just, you know, you know me. And hopefully people, like, I'm, I'm happy-go-lucky. It's pretty and, chill, chill, guys. It's pretty chill. <laughs> I'm like, look, if, just, if, it's, if everything's right, I'm just a happy, he's like, you know, he's like, I'm so sorry for the inconvenience, sir. Like, you know, is there anything I could do to make this experience better? Can you want a free drink for your inconvenience of coming back and all this? I was like, man, no, I just want it right. Like, I got kids. This isn't even for me. Like, that's all, all I care about are them. You know, I'm like, I just want to be ha like, I'm happy that you fixed it. That's all I care about, you know? And he's like. You know, then we got to talking and he opened up to me and literally he went from this completely negative thought process of like, this guy's such an asshole, like, like all these yeah. things into like being like, oh, you're relatable, man. You have kids too. And really? those kids have issues. Yeah. My kids have a shellfish allergy. And I was like, so you that, like, understand that everybody's just going through something. That if you were trying to make it right, like don't flip out on the customer. Right. Yeah. But literally that may have been the last time I ever go to McDonald's and I might have to tell my kids, actually, you're allergic to something that's in there now. Remember the last time you got a stomach gate, stomach gate? Like, I refuse to, like, one, have my wife feel that way because, yeah. like, that was wrong of that manager. But yeah. also, too, these businesses, there's, a, there's, no re there's no wonder why they're failing. All you need is customer service, right? Most people, you give them happiness. You give them that positive interaction experience, right? Going back to this, like, there's so many people just being pulled down by this drifting behavior. They're, they're drifting. It's just they get caught in their emotions. And again, emotions are powerful and you can have emotions like you're supposed to have emotions. Like don't, don't be a robot, but like they drifted, they drifted into that negative emotion and they caught themselves talking mad smack about you and your wife. Like, I know. And I wonder, I wonder if that, like, if that manager came in the day understanding that like these customers just want this, not, I think the one that was taking over for the night shift, like after that interaction, he's like, man, the guy was pretty cool. Like he was, you know, he just wanted it to be right. He's not, blaming anybody you know like i'm not and again I, I told him i was like dude like i just wanted to get it for a dollar like you know like, like he's like i get it he's like i would have done the same thing i was like hence why i'm like hey please make sure so i don't have to come back through here uh so it's dude honestly i i, I can we go off for this a little longer <laughs> I, yeah, hey, yeah we got time we can we can edit uh, some stuff uh, uh, here's, here's a funny thing i i had this moment with my with my brother and it was so funny um, the concept of drifting, and I think this comes into society where we have such set defined procedures in society that I think sometimes people forget that like there is a box, but you can be as a human being, step out of the box and be a human. Um, 
So, for example, we went to a restaurant and he orders a head because he's kind of hungry. So he's like, I'm going to order a head so it can be ready. But the only thing is when you order a head is it's supposed to be to go. Right. <laughs> Special <laughs> so, requests. So like, so like the whole place we get there and we order a head, but all orders, like I said, they're only to go. And we get there and our order is not ready. Mind you, this place is not busy. There's 16 chairs and there's no one there. So when we get it, we're like, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. All right, we're going to eat here. And we ask, like, it's cool to eat here, right? But I think the girl, and I'm, again, this might come down to you had a, your customer service person had an angry moment. This girl had more of like a, just an inept moment younger less experienced and she goes oh your order was to go so you can't eat here <laughs> she just gave the automated response like there's 16 chairs yeah. 16 openings i'm thinking you can find a way to for us to sit here and we'll pay and it's not like we're trying to get out of a tip or anything like that's not the problem i just don't think she had the capacity of going oh wait these are human beings. Like I can, I can, I can help them out. So, you know what we did? I just go like, I just took over and I said, Hey, this is what we're going to do. We're just going to sit here and we'll clean up after ourselves. Sound good. And she's like, Oh, okay. You know? Um, and it, it's kind of just comes to the moment. Where, a like, Chipotle. No, it wasn't a Chipotle. I think it was something else. It was like a, I don't know what it was. It was a while back, but it kind of got me thinking about that where it's like, people are just so in their own head. And it's like, they just give the automated response where it's like, dude, like read the present moment, be here and understand you can have autonomy. You can give a different response. And I think a lot of people can drift so easily into thinking this hypnotic rhythm of like, oh, these are the automated responses. This is what I'm supposed to do. It's yeah. like, no. But yeah, the yeah. SOPs are there for you to check the box to make sure that those key points were covered. But like you're supposed to put some flair in there. Now again, like if someone comes, hey, like you're doing something a little bit off, well then you can like nullify it a little bit. But no. I mean, I know my spiel and your spiel, while they are getting the same level of service, right? Whether it's you know our main, you know, or our businesses, it's it still has to have that that humanizing effect. And yeah, you know, um, I don't know, man. I think it might have just been COVID for that generation. Those you know these these kids that are now coming into the to the workforce a little bit and they have to deal with those jobs that again are just getting their feet wet. Um, they're freezing up a little bit because, you know, like they see, they see somebody that might be a little intimidating, you know, facial hair, right. Bigger stature. Maybe the guys look like they work out or they look like they fight, you know, like, you know, maybe you go, you go in your full gi or something and they're like, mm, this guy. I had, a, I had a lady once go like, look at my ear. She's like, Oh, you're a fighter. Huh? I was like, thanks, but I'm not like, I just, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I like, I saw your ear, man. <laughs> but no. you know, they like, like you said, it's, you know, the, the freezing up or like, I, you know, like they don't know how to, they're just generating like a canned response. And it's like, no, please. Like, you know, like that's why I really do. I mean, every flight that I have, and actually I want to tell you this right now. So like I had a book business class with Southwest, which just means that they give me a free drink. I'm going to give it away to somebody because I don't do that. But like, Hey, by the way, I got, a, I got a drink coupon. Do you want to use it for me? Like I just, you know, and like make that be a conversation starter. But I've met so many amazing people and get to know about them, had like no. conversations as a result of just like humanizing, you know, a, a flight experience, which again, it's kind of tense. You know, if you get a rinky dink 737 700, you're, you're kind of like this. Yeah. It's not this. I'm like, God almighty, like, can I please get an 800 or a max so I can at least spread my shoulders a little bit? Yeah. Uh, Especially with your with your your beefing up program right now, or you're trying to deficit, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm failing at my deficit, but oh. uh, actually, no, I'm doing better. I'm doing better. Um, you know, I, I've I found I had some drifting behaviors this weekend. You know, I'm not gonna lie, but again, I didn't have my pantry set up. No, no one's fault yeah. but my own. And literally, I looked at my pantry today, and I told Brittany, I was like it feels so weird that this top shelf doesn't exist right now. And that was literally like the, the last of the Mohicans. <laughs> it was the last of like the easy cheap bars that were like cliff bars when I was bulking and shit. Yeah. And it was, it was still around. 
And I had one last night, so it was actually like 250 calories. Yeah. Wow. Cookies for our, our game night, and there was a couple around. I actually didn't eat those. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I'm over here rummaging through other stuff, and it's it's fine, you know. But like it's it's cool. I'm like, oh, I woke up today, I feel good. Maybe I needed it mentally. Um, but yeah, it's just <laughs> man. The I'm sure we all have amazing stories that to comment on shoot it's like if someone can give us the best story comment in the comments you yeah know. please give us a story i'm gonna recap the book real quick uh just because yeah. i have it here guys outwitting the devil if you want to read it the first one is definite of purpose uh author and he'll emphasize the importance of having a clear and specific purpose in life without purpose you're vulnerable to being controlled by negative forces two the power of thought we talked about this our mind right the social contagion hill believes that our thoughts have power to shape our lives positive thoughts lead to positive outcomes while negative thoughts lead to negative ones that's such a deep one three fear and faith hill discusses the role of fear and faith in our lives fear can paralyze us so you have to learn to find a way to prevent it from that and faith gives us the courage and strength to take our actions on the devil's tools the devil uses various tools to control individuals including fear procrastination and decision he uses things such as like sex indulgence uh addictions food to get there um the law of hypnotic rhythm that's how our habits and routines can create you know a difficult thing to break that's automated he encourages readers to be aware of their habits and consciously create new habits the importance of education this is a good one right here, right? We we're talking about education and people being educated. They emphasize education and continuous learning. Education is essential for personal growth and success. And I want to put my own caveat here. Whether that education is through college or self-educated, we are now seeing that a lot of people don't trust the college system and are becoming more self-educated and become way more powerful because of their self-education. And the lastly, the power of persistence. The importance of persistence in achieving your goal, you often require persistence and constantly to face setbacks and obstacles, but you just have to keep rolling. So, um, yeah, let's let's take control of our lives, guys. Let's overcome the negatives, um, use them and limit, you know, limiting beliefs and keep itself improving. I think that's it, man. All right. Awesome, guys. Well, thank you for listening to this episode of The Macro Perspective with Seamus Sullivan and myself, Marcos Rivera. Uh We'd love to get some like comments and some subscribers or follows, depending on which platform you're using. So if you could feel free to um, give us some feedback, we would greatly appreciate it. And until next time.